Good morning, muffins. Yeah, what do you expect? Haven't seen a lab assignment in a machine learning course. So, it seems that y'all really like my video on Khan. Thank you so much. I love y'all. Anyways, today we will be having our lab section. As many have mentioned, initially, cons are not tested on datasets of higher dimensional inputs. A viewer of this channel has suggested we should use eminence to show if cons are really capable of handling higher dimensional data. So this will be our lab assignment today. Thank you for your suggestion. Now, it is very clear that cons are made for regression problems in sciences. And even if they claim to beat the curse of dimensionality, a vision or image processing problem is quite different from what it's designed for. But just as the first person to open up an oyster knows not what is in store for them, for the sake of science, I'll make this bad boy fit so many splines in it. We start with downloading the Eminence dataset from Kaggle. It is 7,000 images of handwritten digits, each 28 times 28 pixels. It is quite famous as an example dataset for classification problems, a widely used benchmark for testing new machine learning models and paradigms. However, the Eminence dataset is also infamous for being overused. Famous ML researchers has come forward stating that it is not comparable with modern computer vision tasks. So, we shall seek spicier datasets for our lab assignment. Many in the machine learning community had put together datasets in similar formats as Eminence, of which we will try Fashion Eminence and Canada Eminence. Canada Eminence? Canada Eminence. Canada is a language spoken in Karnataka, a state in southern India. They have their own number system, and that will be the basis of our digit classification problem. The entries in this dataset also have more variations since Kannada numerals are written with a more diverse set of features. They are also famous for their many types of rice kicks according to Google. Meanwhile, fashion eminence consists of image of clothing items. You can see that it is way more visually diverse and it also includes color tones of the shirts and pants. As I have expected, improvements and variations of cans have been popping up like people wanting to be your friend after pulling out the pack of gum in middle school. In the month since Ziming published his OG paper and code, there have been hundreds of repo on GitHub about cans. Some have worked with the classical eminence and gave positive results. For this experiment, we will download this implementation of Khan called Efficient Khan, a much appreciated performance improvement. We'll also get Convolution Khan, which is the Convolution Neural Network version of Khan. For, for those uninitiated in convolutional neural networks, instead of fully connected layers of neural networks, we have convolution kernels, which are neurons that connect only to a local region of pixels, so the weights can adapt to local features of an image. But of course, with Khan's, we'll have splines instead of weights. Finally, as a control group, we have old school neural networks. We test each model type with various widths and depths, and notice how they each have different parameter counts. Although for convolution con, I can only really try three models, two of which I copy from the repo's example folder. You'll see why soon. We will set up the code in a notebook, where we load and normalize the data, define functions for training and calculating metrics, and create the models one by one. Well, yes, most of it was stolen directly from other repos. W welcome to a CS course lab, guys. I'll let the notebooks run for a bit. The fans have been screaming bloody murder at me, but really, this is probably the closest I'll ever get to being a pop star. So here we have our results stored in Python pickle files. They have more or less converged within 40 training epochs. Here we care less about the individual models, but more about testing the pros and cons of using cons versus classical MLP. Well, yes, I don't think anyone would be interested in looking at what data points the test set each model gets wrong, but, but anyways, here's a TSNE dimension reduction. Large X's are wrong answers. As expected, the training time of CAN models is longer than classical models, and convolution CANs take even more time. 
Of course, this does not mean further optimizations will not be made, seeing as MLP and matrix algorithms on GPU have existed for some decades now. Eventually, Khan model's efficiency will be up to our liking. Then, we can plot a graph of the size accuracy trade-off like this. On the x-axis is the amount of parameters in the model. On the y-axis is the highest test accuracy after training 40 epochs. The higher the parameter count, the more storage space it needs but it does not necessarily mean it have a slower running time. We can see the trade-off between lighter weight models and higher accuracy. For the Fashion Eminence and Canada Eminence dataset, we see a lower overall accuracy, a testament to the higher variation in the dataset. In all three datasets, we can see that fully connected cans can be on par with its fully connected MLP counterpart, but does not provide a competitive edge in terms of model size. However, the success of Convolution Khan giving the best of both accuracy and small size shows that Khan as a paradigm is adaptable to convolutional architectures. I haven't tested all variations in the Convolution Khan repo, but their notebook shows similar promising results. Also, I have not seen much on GitHub as of now, but I would love to see Khan's be applied to other fancier neural architectures, such as Generative Adversarial, Recurrent, and LSTM. So, there's our lab assignment. As always, you can get my notebooks at the link in the description. Now, if you like, for your own assignment work, you can try running my notebooks, but with different settings or different data sets and see what new results there would be. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. This video is a really good practice for me, I guess, to be a TA, seeing as I'm going to start grad school soon. If you like the lab, hit the like button. If you dislike it, tell me how I can improve. Leave a suggestion on what topics you want to see next. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more. See you nada!